Good morning, everyone. Yeah, my name is Tunde Elijah Kelani. I'm the head of innovation and partnership for Crowdfast. Um, one of, it's been very interesting in Nigeria and in Africa as a whole. Um, one of the few stuff we are seeing right now, we are seeing a whole lot of technologies that is coming up, and um, we are looking for ways to plug in. Just like what the professor said, um, the leadership of Africa has been um, a very stressful one. We can't do some, some basic things. I remember two weeks ago, I was with the Central Bank of Nigeria, and we were having some discussion, and I just mentioned, mistakenly mentioned blockchain. And the guy said, I don't want to hear that word from you again. And that's to tell you um, the kind of issues that we are dealing with. We are, um, of course, we are right now, we are trying to do all sorts of things, you know, to fully um, um, increase the adoption and all of that. And what I see happening with a lot of young Africans is this. Of course, we know that there is a leadership problem, but we are driving leadership from bottom down. We don't want to wait for our leaders to just, you know, till when they are done. When they are ready, they will come and meet us. So we are trying all that we can do um, to build um, something for ourselves that will also make us at par with some of our contemporaries in China, in the US, and all of that. And um, that's one of the reasons why we started Crowdforce. Crowdforce is about two, two to three years now, two and a half years, actually. And then our model, basically, is really not about, um, it's not blockchain because of the regulation thing happening in Nigeria. It's basically financial inclusion and big data. Of course, we are using what we call um, a network of field agents. So currently, we are the biggest, largest agent distribution network. We have agent network across the country, um, both in Nigeria and in Ghana, um, who help us do two things either get data or enable financial inclusion services in their community. So basically, um, we have been able to build this over, over the years, and um, I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be sharing the story of how we started and how we moved into blockchain. So you will get a proper understanding of what we are trying to do and what we still, um, what we're trying to build in here. We started up as um, mobile phones. Um, that was two years ago. We we had a simple problem in Nigeria at that time. If you want to get any information, it's pretty hard to get any information. You have to go through a lot of people, and their communities are very hostile that you can't even get information from there. And so we saw all of this, and then we decided, okay, you know what, what are we going to do with this? We understand that data is the new oil, and um, a lot of people are coming into Africa. They want to get data. They want to... Um, a lot of organizations that are also coming in need data to make decisions. Even government policies have not been able to work effectively because there are no data to support um, their decisions. And so we felt, okay, what should we do? So we, um, we started up, these are the problem, you know, poor infrastructure. There are no infrastructure in place. Um, Kenya is doing well. Uh, we've been reading a lot of reports online, but you know, in Nigeria, it's not the same. We have um, some places where network is pretty not very strong. Um, we have areas with Boko Haram issues where we can't really get into. We have area, um, areas where it's basically, even in Lagos State, you know, Lagos seems to be like the big, big thing. There are still areas in Lagos State where you cannot actually get data, um, places like Marco Kwanko. And so these are, the, these are the, some of the challenges we saw, and um, most of the data that we have are offline. You know, there are no, a lot of people are not in the digital economy space yet. Um, we also saw difficult logistics in getting to these places. And those are the issues that we had that we, that we saw. And then what we simply did was this, we built a network of 100,000 field agents, independent agents across the country, who help us to get data. So these guys are on our network, we, we, we have been able to work with several agencies, you know, to bring them on board. We train them, and all they do is to help us get data. So we have, um, like, a mobile app that we use to get this data. Um, you, you define your requirement. You tell us what you want to do, and then we put it on our mobile app and send it across to our field agents. And these guys can get geotagged data from their location. And then we also monitor from... Know, the back end, we have a, our own quality control um, stuff that we do. So um, one of the things we saw is this. It's because of our network, it's easier to get data at a faster rate. 
and at a very cheaper rate. So because all that we just need to do is define the requirement, send it to their mobile app, and these guys get it. And from your own um, office on your laptop, you can be seeing the result in real time. And then you can make faster decisions. And so that's what we have built. This is at the benefit of um, the mobile forms, which is exclusively on the big data. I'm still going to talk about the financial inclusion part. Um, we have um, increased accuracy of data, real-time reporting, blah, blah, um, advanced export and integration of data, enhanced data security, richer data, and then the field agent. Now, um, about a year ago, we noticed something. We saw that we actually have this field agent, and a whole lot of companies want to also get um, their product down to the underserved communities. Now, this field agent stay, they live in those underserved communities. Do you get? I mean, everybody has a smartphone now. Some, everybody has a phone. Um, so this agent live in this underserved community. And we saw a lot of companies coming to meet us, financial institutions, um, um, FMCGs, and a whole lot, coming to meet us and say, you know what? I want to get my product down to this community. How do I do this thing? And so something started coming up into our head. We started pivoting, saying, okay, you know, I think we should change from just financial, sorry, from just collection of data to change our business model to um, um, the field agent, you know, making them an agent distribution network. And so that was how we started the, um, the financial inclusion product known as Payforce. Um, what we simply did was, was this. We had some of them. Okay, let, let me read through the problem first. Um, one thing we noticed about the financial inclusion product is, um, especially in Nigeria and other emerging markets, there are most of the transactions are done offline. It means they are cash-based. And so you cannot really trace a lot of things because you can't trace buying power, you can't, you, you can't make decisions because, I mean, this is physical. And so those are some of the issues that we saw. Um, Two billion people across all, all emerging markets, not Nigeria, you know, on the bank population, lack of transparency. And so they can't, you cannot really make decisions because this is, um, they are still stuck with the traditional way of doing things. And so we decided, okay, you know, how do we move people into the digital economy. And so we came up with the Payforce product. Um, the idea of the Payforce product is simple. It's just to create an ecosystem of over one million merchants across Africa. We are um, working with West Africa right now. We are, we're doing something in Ghana, and then very soon we are hoping to move to Chad and some South Sudan and some other places across West Africa. Um, the idea is to create an ecosystem of over one million merchants and agents that come together to provide daily transaction to over one billion consumers in developing countries. Um, so what we did was this. We gave, we identified some of our field agents, especially those that have a retail shop. Then we empower them with a mobile app, and then they use their money to transact business. And what's the transaction? So what they do is they are like human ATMs. So you need to withdraw cash. You want to deposit. You can simply walk to a retail store and make transactions. You can also do a whole lot of things aside just transactions. You can transfer funds. You can um, um, buy cryptocurrency. You get you can you can buy and sell cryptocurrency um, on the counter crypto, um, trading and a whole lot of stuff. So those are some of the things we did. So we empower micro businesses with the tool to drive mass adoption of digital crypto financial service in their community. Some right now um, the PFAs that's the pension for the administrators. They are also riding on us to enable micro pension to these people, um, to entrepreneurs in communities and a whole lot of stuff. We also have. Um, some lending platform who ride on us, banks and all of that, ride on our agent network to sell their services in on the self community. Because the reality is they can't go to those community. It's risky for them, um, you know, but these, our agents are members of the community. In some cases, they're actually leaders of their communities. So, I mean, they, they, their communities kind of trust them, you understand? So. Um, Okay, we're bringing the next billion consumer in emerging market to digital economy requires a human touch, and that's what we have done. We, we, because there's a whole lot of lack of um, trust. Um, a lot of people do not trust banks. They feel, they believe, they feel that um, these guys are gonna make their money, they're just gonna take their money. I'll give you an example of cases um, that I saw while on the field. Um, there is this um, market in Kano. It's called uh, Singer Market. And 
people don't take money to the bank. When you visit any allergy, you have to sit. The chair you will sit on is actually underneath there is money. And I'm talking of millions of money. So you sit on money in, in that market. Do you get? They don't believe in taking money to the bank because they will tell you, if I take money to the bank, if I need my money on Sunday, will the bank give me? Do you get? So, and that is the reason why these guys will prefer to keep their money, raw cash like that, in a Ghana must go bag. Sorry, I use Ghana must go. <laughs> in the bag, and then all they do is, you can sit on the bag, and I mean, they trust themselves. They have strong security and all. So no, they believe nobody will steal their money. Um, there's also another market in, um, in Borono. It's called Moody Cattle Market. It's the largest cattle market in West Africa. Even with the Boko Haram thing, people still go there to trade every Tuesday. If there is a bombing there today, tomorrow people are still there making, selling products. And that's the resilience nature, nature of Nigerians. And so they still go there to, and there are millions of Naira that move out of that place. There are no single banks there. Banks do not want to even build anything there because they, know, they don't even want to put their ATMs there because, I mean, it's dangerous for them. But with what we have done, we have agent network in those locations who are members, who are also cattle sellers, do you get, who in turn enable financial transactions. So they are like the banks in those locations, and that's what we have, we have done. Um, at Crowdforce, we use a mobile technology and the largest merchant agent network to help businesses, banks, digital wallets, and exchange companies <laughs> across underserved um, population in emerging markets. We leverage our existing network of SMEs, uh, retail outlets to grant consumers cryptocurrencies within a 15-minute walking radius. So uh, another thing that we've also done, currently we are, we are riding on Flashcoin. Flashcoin um, is an altcoin in um, Canada, um, and um, they are, they, it was built on Litecoin. And so it enabled remittance. So um, there is a, so let's assume there is a chicke in, the, in Canada who wants to send money to his grandma in a village in um, Kaduna. All he needs to do is just to locate, tell the grandma, give me the nearest pay first agent, mobile money agent around your location. And then he sends money via Flashcoin, which, which and this transaction happened in less than um, 30 seconds with 0.025% charge. And then all the woman needs to do is just to walk straight, just a 10 minute walk or five minute walk as the case may be, to the nearest pay first agent and exchange it for cash, simple, and get cash, and then he can do his business and all of that. So, um, and we all know that the reality is there's a whole lot. I think um, last year about $61 billion flowed into Nigeria in remittance, and then, and it's a million dollars, sorry, flowed into Nigeria as um, remittance. And so there's a lot of money coming in, and we felt, okay, we need to be able to track all of these things, and that's one of the reasons why we've created this. Um, consumers should be able to receive their remittances by visiting the local merchant store located within 10 minutes walking distance, and that's what we're trying to build. Um, this is the future of the product, the, the, the mobile app. On the pay for app, we have, you can pay for your utility bills. Um, um, the electricity platform, they write, also write on our platform, so you can pay for your electricity bills. Um, those that use solar, we have pay as you use solar, um, panel where off grid solar panels such that you you pay according to your usage and they, they also write on our platform cash in cash out you can collect money and um, all of that you can also do crypto fiat exchange um, you can do accounts wallet open you can also open a first year accounts opening with a bank so you don't have a bank so we help you we also help banks to open accounts um, spot betting um, buy, sell, cryptocurrency, top of fiat money in digital wallet, crypto fiat exchange and all of that. Now on the mobile phones, which is the data, the big data we have, uh, market research and surveys, we do retail audits and sensors for a lot of organizations, um, mystery shopping tasks, data verification on citizen engagement and a whole lot of that. Um, let's move on. So this is our portfolio. We work with Dufield. Dufield is um, a large um, network. It's an Indian company. Um, they do um, noodles. Um, I think um, it's owned by Tolaram Group or something. And um, we help them with a lot of market research in deep communities. I mean, communities where there are no transportation, but there is Indomie there. Indomie is one of the noodles. It's by in the north. Um, um, Biesedorf, we also 
Um, we mapped out over 8,000 retail stores across the country. And we do this in less than three days, four days a week without stress because we already have the network. All we just need just to push it to our agency, our network, and then they get this data for you in real time. In real time. Unilever, we also work with Unilever. Aid Health Care Foundation. Um, what we did with Aid Health Care Foundation, okay, no, sorry, um, Health Strategy and Aid Health Care Foundation with Bill and Melinda Gates. We did something with them. We mapped out, we did a facility assessment of primary health care across the country. And we did that in about two weeks. Um, we assess all of the facility because I think Bill and Melinda Gates and some of the NGOs are putting some fund into this primary health care and they wanted to see the progress report. So we did a kind of an impact assessment for them and all of this. And so these are some of our projects. These are the things that we've done. Then this is actually the big catch, the trader money program with um, um, the federal government. So the federal government came on with the idea of there are a lot of people in underserved communities who don't have access to loan. So the federal, government, the federal government decided to give them, um, in partnership with the Bank of Industry, decide to give um, millions of traders, petty traders, people who sell small, small stuff, um, access to non-interest loan. And um, in three months, we were able to gather, we worked with, um, with, with, the, with the organization, that's Bank of Industry, we were able to gather 2.7 million um, data of petty traders you know, across the country. And then the next, that's the first phase. And the next phase is we are getting 20 million, which we started last week. Um, we're getting 20 million um, data for them. So, and they've enabled, they've given about 2 million people um, access to loan, most, just about um, um, 5 million, sorry, I said 5 million. Um, $5, $10, thereabout. You get pretty small money. But these guys, if you know, um, just like what the professor was saying, these guys, practically do not have anything. And then they can grow as they return back the money. You know, when you return $10, you get 20, you get 30, you get 100. So as you return back the money, you know, your credit um, this thing is going up. So we also work with um, the Nas National Bureau of Statistics in Nigeria to help gather data. We do a lot of tracking, consumer tracking, <laughs> price tracking, and a whole lot of that. Um, statistical services and all and that. Um, so now this is the story, so we don't bore ourselves. Um, let, let's just look at this. Karen is an American investigative journalist with a global news organization researching into election from the deep interland of Zimbabwe. This is what we're trying to solve. She needs some picture to complete her future, scheduled to go to, to print next week. She tries to get a visa, but could not due to the short time. Through and help, she's able to get some and take an high resolution picture. She's able to tell some people in Zimbabwe and say, you know what, um, on the back of mobile forms, I need you to help me get this particular data. And then we get this data for her, and then she gets her record in real time. And that's what we are trying to solve with uh, mobile forms. Um, Tolaram 2, an Asian conglomerate, needs price data for some fast moving consumer goods in northern Nigeria. And in two hours, they're able to put a piece, a team together, we get all the prices for them. We do price tracking. And then Chike lives in the urban city of Lagos, Nigeria, and needs to send money to his great auntie who lives in the village, where there are no banks or ATM. All she needed to do was to go to a nearby mobile money agent to collect the cash. And so these are the things that we have done that and we are also trying to get. Of course, the blockchain um, technology thing is still coming up in Nigeria, but we are trying to build structures in place to enable these things such that when Libra comes in, when other um, platform comes in, then, you know, they can also um, have access to people in underserved communities. And um, thank you.